Hi, I'm David Dodge. Welcome to Green Energy Futures. In December, Canada updated its climate plan around the idea of slashing greenhouse gas emissions by 30% by 2030 and getting Canada to net zero emissions by 2050. Once again, we partner with the Energy vs. Climate podcast, which features Ed Whittingham, Dr. Sarah Hastings-Simon, Dr. David Keith, and special guest Dr. Mark Jacquard to unpack the federal climate plan, which began as a national framework in 2016. We asked host Ed Whittingham for the impossible quick summary of the climate plan update. I would say the top five things would be invest in energy-efficient homes and buildings, invest in clean, affordable transportation and power, put a price on carbon or continue that price through to $170 per ton by 2030, invest in cleaning industry, and then the blanket other category that includes, say, the investment in creating 2 billion trees. The climate plan update is doubly important because it's also driving the federal government's COVID recovery economic stimulus plan. The normally dispassionate and pragmatic Dr. David Keith of Harvard summarized the panel of experts' top shelf reaction to the update. We have a relatively weak federal government compared to the provinces. Uh, Makes it, I think, inherently very hard to do climate policy for real in Canada. And if you'd asked me whether I thought we would have a climate policy this strong, I would have bet against it. So I am really thrilled and proud that this happened. It's it's, it's a big deal by any measure. And I think it it says something important about the way the world may be shifting towards more aggressive climate policies. A centerpiece of the new federal policy is its pledge to increase the price on carbon by $15 per year starting in 2023, rising to $170 by 2030. And according to preliminary modeling by Navius, Dr. Mark Jacquard says the plan just might work. They've simulated this, and so I'm just going to... um, They believe that under most of their scenarios... Uh, this plan, the $170, if they come through with the other elements, it would get us close to that Paris target. The model, like many others, assumes we transition to renewable energy, decarbonize industry, electrify transportation, invest in hydrogen, and it depends heavily on carbon capture and storage, something David Keith says is unlikely to happen that fast. Now to, to say we're going to get into some of the complexities, but while the $170 a ton is a BFD, there's lots of complexity under the hood. And I personally think the chance of actually getting emissions cuts that big by 2030 is pretty low. This is because, says Keith, governments and investment move slow. The climate plan is also guiding economic stimulus for a post-COVID recovery. And billions are being invested in numerous low-carbon strategies to create jobs. In transportation industry, uh, energy, we have a clean fuel standard. It's going to zero in on liquid fuels. And then there's subsidies for various things, retrofits, electric vehicles, industrial innovation, electric vehicle recharging as well, uh, support for infrastructure like transit and land use carbon management, and the possible development of carbon tariffs. Political support for climate action in polling is high, but carbon pricing and taxes are volatile topics. But in addition to Canadian support for action in the polls, Dr. Sarah Hastings-Simon says the corporate political dynamic is changing as well. And so the more that you have... Um, you know, industries that have really reoriented themselves around a world with this carbon price, the the bigger and more powerful that the renewable energy industry gets, as opposed to um, other components of electricity generation, uh, the more politically stable this gets over time. We can barely scratch the surface of this topic in four minutes. Learn more about climate versus energy and find links to the entire full-length podcast at greenenergyfutures.ca. For Green Energy Futures, I'm David Dodge.